Então, o compêndio da Lexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração. Você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é a Lexio Divina? A Lexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita, no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E o último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hello everyone, welcome to this Wednesday, September 15th, when we come together to pray sacred scripture. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the World Community, and I would like to welcome all of you. Today we celebrate a memorial, Our Lady of Sorrows. Just a day after the exaltation of the cross, we celebrate Our Lady of Sorrows. For a while, there were two feasts in honor of the Sorrowful Mother, one going back to the 15th century and the other to the 17th century. For a while, both were ce celebrated by the church, by the universal church. One on the Friday before Palm Sunday, the other in September. The principal biblical reference to mother's sorrows are in Luke chapter 2, verse 35, and John 19, verses 26 to 27. The Lucan passage is Simeon's prediction about the So, the sword piercing Mary's soul. The joining passage relates Jesus' word from the cross to Mary and to the beloved disciple. Many early churches writers interpret the sorrow as Mary's sorrow, especially as she saw Jesus die on the cross. Thus, the two passages are brought together as prediction and fulfillment. Saint Ambrose, in particular, sees Mary as a sorrowful yet powerful figure at the cross. Mary stood fearlessly at the cross while others fled. Mary looked on her son's wound with pity, but saw in them the salvation of the world. As Jesus hung on the cross, Mary did not fear to be killed, but offered herself to her persecutors. Mary, the disciple of her son, She was not fearful of what could happen to her after her son, but she was there, ready to give her life too, for the love of her son, but for the love of the Father, and for the love of each one of us. That's why we celebrate this memorial today, Our Lady of Sorrows. And for that, special readings today. First reading, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 7 to 9, 5, 7 to 9, Sponsorial Psalm, Psalm 31, Psalm 31, and Gospel from St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 33 to 35. We can start the reading of the Word of God for today. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and, cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, Jesus became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. Prophet Isaiah had already prophesied about the suffering servant. Jesus was a suffering servant. He fulfilled all the prophecies of the Old Testament that would tell us that the servant of the Lord would suffer but would save us. So here we see Hebrews reminding, reminding us that, that he suffered, he went through the cross, and he was obedient, obedient unto death. His submission made him our Savior. The disciples were awaiting a powerful Savior to come, a man who would rule over all Israel, full of power. But God sent his only begotten Son, a man who was willing to die, a God that was willing to bring us to heaven with him. Responsorial Psalm today, Psalm 31 says, In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplish for those who take refuge in you, in the sight of everyone. Save me, O Lord, in your steadfast love. This is what the psalmist sings today. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. I seek refuge in you. I seek you, Lord. This is what we should say when we are in sufferings like our Blessed Mother. We celebrate the cross of Jesus yesterday, our little of sorrows today. When we are in sorrow, let's ask God to have mercy on us, to be merciful to each one of us, and saying that we put all our trust in Him. The Gospel today from St. Luke chapter 2, verses 33 to 35 says, Mary and Joseph were amazed at what was being said by Simeon about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined to the fallen and the rising of many in Israel, and be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A sword will pierce your heart too. A sword pierce the heart of our Blessed Mother, our Mother, the Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. She received a pierce on that day when Simeon prophesied that this child would be a reason for many to raise to God and to fall. This child is destined for the falling and rising of many. Falling, if you don't believe in him. Rising, if you believe in him. That's exactly what he said yesterday to Nicodemus, saying, Those who look at my cross, if they believe, they will be saved. If they believe, they will have eternal life. So he is the reason of the rising of many, because if we believe, we will go to heaven with him. So two beautiful feastings that we celebrate, one yesterday and another today. And may the Lord bless us through the intercession of our Blessed Mother to believe in the cross of our Lord and to go through our sufferings, yes, but with the hope that He is our Lord and God and that our Blessed Mother is with us. Amen. <laughs>